Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name's Adam Hamlin. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and I'd like to thank Chris at Lembe Lembe Resort for sponsoring this episode. Um, wonderful destination for muck diving. Um, fantastic critters, great guides. Um, and so if you're in, in the market for a muck diving trip, um, head on over and see them. Um, I'd like to also introduce my fellow collaborator, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Good day, Adam. Good to see you. <laughs> it's almost funny. Um, so, yeah. so what Alex is referring to there is that Facebook, in its infinite wisdom, um, has decided that um, WetPixel is Australian based, and um, therefore it's the accent, Adam. No one can place it. <laughs> and therefore, and therefore, um, I can't post any news items from um, from WetPix onto Facebook because there's a news media ban thing going on between Facebook and Australia. So. Um, if anyone from Facebook's listening, I'm in the UK and Wet Pixels hosted in, in the US. But anyway, um, we thought it would be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about the web. And specifically, you know, I was going to ask Alex whether having an individual photographer's website, whether having it, uh, your own personal website in these days of social media is still worth the effort and, and, and the expense. Um, what do you think about that, Alex? Um, I think the answer to that question is it really depends individually. I think for the majority of people that do underwater photography as a hobby, I think maintaining a big personal website is probably not particularly valuable these days. I think, you know, say five, ten years ago, um, certainly ten years ago, I think people would regularly visit individual photographers' websites. Yep. You know, I remember many places there were big lists of photographers who had nice websites that you could go and see their pictures on, yep. and people would make a real effort to to enjoy each other's pictures on websites. I think those days are long gone. Yep. I think that a lot of web photographers would publish blogs, news items on websites, um, keep galleries up to date per trip. Per trip, I know I did. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that would generate, you know, there'd be a lot of interest and a lot of traffic on particular websites for that. But I think those days are long gone. And I think yep. the majority of the people now go directly to social media of its all different flavors. I'm not, not saying that one is, is, is better than another at all. I think all of them have their strengths, but they go to social media for their, their content and their interaction. Yep. And perhaps I only go to websites, you know, I think the main traffic I would say on my website is actually people wanting to specifically interact with me over more serious things. So I would say for photographers who, for whom, you know, they're trying to, you know, make a good name in underwater photography, potentially develop some career opportunities, even if it's only a, a small part of their overall career, but you know, they'd like the opportunities of maybe doing magazine assignments or doing, you know, running workshops or, or whatever it is. Then I think having a website becomes important because only having a presence on social media, I think, can limit your appeal. There's no, there's no doubt that photographers with big social media followings um, can generate interesting work and, and great opportunities from that. Yep. But I think the role of a website is that people might discover you through your social media, but before they're likely to offer you some great, you know, contract or opportunity that you want, whether it's, you know, an ambassador role or, a, you know, a travel opportunity or whatever it is, they're likely to want to find out more before they, they start, Sorry. you know, giving you stuff. Yeah. And I think a website is a great place to show that you are here to stay, you are a serious operator. And there's definitely, you know, there's a, a, a Squarespace advert on um, YouTube at the moment that comes up whenever I try and watch anything that, you know, it says a website makes it real. And yep. there's an element of that, you know, and actually the Squarespace website is slightly tongue in cheek saying you can lie as much as you like on your website. But once it's on a website, everyone believes it. Um, but I think it's it, it makes an important point that actually if people are coming to you and are actually going to start wanting to invest money in you, and that can be individuals wanting to buy prints. It can be magazines wanting to make you a contributor. It yep. can be people wanting to come on your workshops. Yep. And particularly that last one, it involves in spending a lot of money potentially with you. Yep. I think people want to know that you're here to stay and that they can they can trust you. And I think a website, therefore, these days acts much more as a static sort of online CV, you know, not as formal as that, but it's kind of a CV slash press release about you and what you do so people can see your work and get to know you. And as photographers, our, our main trading point are our beautiful images. Yep. And it's great to be able to show them on your terms, your way. Yep. 
I think the um, I think social media is a great way of driving traffic to websites. But websites themselves, you then once you've got people's attention, you know that's your opportunity then to 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 make the pitch to 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 captivate mm. them with your whatever it is you're attempting to do. Um, and mm. you know you don't really have the opportunity of social media because there's so much volume of stuff going on, on social media. Um, the other element I think that's really important, and this is coming possibly with my editorial hat on, is um, you know I will frequently um, Google photographers' individual names, um, and really coming up into that, that that search engine thing coming up. Now, of course, you will get you know if you if you search a name, particularly a fairly distinctive name, um, then you will come up fairly high in the rankings on your Facebook ranking as well because that does reflect those search engines. But if if you've got a more common name, perhaps even Adam Hanlon, there's more than one Adam Hanlon out there, and you know by oh having, my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nightmare thought. Um, but by how by 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 having my website, that's what comes up first, you know. So and I think that's a really important thing for for would be prospective people who want to give you work mm. um, so I, yeah, I, I, I definitely I, know th- some- I definitely think we need a two-pronged approach you know we use mm. social media as a way of, of driving traffic towards our websites and I think I think that's the way it, that's the way it needs to work but I still think a website is relevant for most people yeah yeah and I think for me about five years ago I, I redesigned my website and I think you know the needs of a website actually change all the time yep. but you know as an individual you can't spend your entire working life making sure your website is exactly perfect you know you I would say once or twice a decade maybe you're gonna make a significant redesign and then you'll probably fiddle around with things maybe add some new sections take some sections off it to keep it in tune with what people want it to do for them yep. um I made a big change in my website probably about five years ago now. It's probably longer, but it feels about that sort of length of time ago. Um, And I'd moved it from being a site that I was regularly updating to one that was much more. This is the information about Alex. It must be more than five years ago, actually. But anyway, um, this is the information about Alex. And then there are certain sections on it that I update regularly. But the majority of it is designed to stay completely static. Mm. I do feed into it my Instagram feed. And actually at the moment, I also feed in our wet pixel live um, feed. Um, although that's actually, um, I, I need to get a, a key off you actually to be able to um, make it um, update more regularly. Um, and though, but actually I don't want my website to be dominated by my social media channels because if someone has come to my website to, you know, hopefully engage with one of the things I do, mm. I don't want them whisked off into the distracting world of social media. Yep. So although it's, you can feed all your social media into your website so that the, the content on your website is changing all the time, Yep. You need to be slightly careful about that because ultimately, if someone's come to your website, you actually want them to get the information they want and potentially, you know, you know, buy some pictures for a, for a magazine or in my case, maybe sign up for a workshop or, yep. you know, sign up for something, you know, an online teaching course I'm doing or something like that. So that for me is what my workshop, my website's for. I'd like to carry on and actually show you a bit of my website in a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think it's probably worth talking a little bit. Yeah, nuts and bolts, maybe. So so um, and I'll, I'll, I'll lead with my the way I run my website. Um, I have bought a um, I buy into a subscription. Um, I'm my particular website is hosted by a company called Felter Shelter um, other well known ones, Smug Mug. Um, there's one called Zenfolio as well. And these are basically template based solutions. Um, I have to say Photoshop is pretty, pretty sophisticated. It will do lots of stuff. Um, the downside is it's relatively expensive. There's an ongoing monthly cost to it. Um, and, you know, at some point you've got to figure out, well, am I going to sell enough images? Am I going to generate enough interest in my website to justify the cost? That's a, a personal decision that will vary from, from person to person. The, the upside is it's very, very simple. Um, you know, I just load photos onto it and um, I can organize photos in it. It's very well structured, I think, for for providing providing what I need to do with it. But as mm-hmm. as you the point you made earlier, Alex, mine doesn't my portfolio page, for example, very, very rarely changes these days. Um, mm-hmm. it's more things like like, you know, providing I, I provide proofs, for example, for clients via my website stack kind of stuff so it's more i'm using it more in its back end now probably than i am you know the front end front facing mm. um um image gallery so on and so forth so mm. um yeah um but so so, so one option one option is a template based you buy a solution it, it is relatively expensive i would say um and you know photoshop smug mugs and folio all of these there are others as well um are ways that you can 
you can get in and 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 just buy something off the shelf. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was just saying it, it is really interesting. I think I think the main thing I would ask, you know, I would imagine a lot of photographers maybe have domain names registered to themselves. Mm. But I think you need to, I think, you know, website design starts about you thinking what you need it for you to do for you as a photographer individually, yep. what you are hoping for it to achieve. Yep. And that really dictates the structure. You know, you write down the four or five things that people are likely to come to you for, and those become the main columns you know, the main, you know, the main structure. And then, you know, some of them might be relatively small in terms of content. Some might be relatively big. But, you know, I think, you know, we all use websites all the time. We all have feelings for websites that we find very useful and websites that we find a mess. And I think those things can also guide you um, a great deal. I, I do think, though, you know, websites can become a, a bit like a garden. They can become a bit unruly. You know, you could put a few more things there and something might grow a bit out of control and they do need sort of pruning and tidying up and weeding from time to time to keep them yep. looking good. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I was going to sh- I was actually going to try and um, screen share with you now and show you my website. Um, so I think that's the easiest way really to talk through sort of the decisions behind it and what I try and make it do for me. Yeah. Um, this is, is my website. Um, and I think the easiest way to tell you about it is to show you. Um, so my website follows a you know, fairly standard structure. Um, obviously, as a photographer, I have pictures reasonably front and center. I think a difficult challenge with a, a website these days is people are going to view it on different devices. So yeah. you need to use software that will allow things like menus to be um, to be changed. You know, when you view my website on a website on a on a computer, yeah. the menus across the top. When you view it on a phone, it's actually a drop down menu with a little box, you know, and those are things that smart modern websites can do. Yeah. Um, there's no point making your website look amazing on, you know, on, on your computer and then everyone who visits it, visits it on a phone and these massive pictures that look amazing on your computer suddenly just don't load on a phone being held vertically. Yeah. So um, that was a, you know, a challenge with the design of this to make it work in, in both formats. Yeah. Um, also, you always run that, you know, although as a photographer, you want to have big images front and center yeah. at the same time, you don't want um you've got to have images that are not so big that they load relatively quickly yeah. you know we've all been to websites where we've clicked on them and nothing's happened for 10 seconds and we're just like i can't bother with this yeah yeah so you know, yeah. You, yeah and i think those are those are challenges to deal with as a photographer because obviously you want to go big on pictures yeah. so the the the, stru- the structure i've got on the top although it looks like there's quite a lot of choice there there's actually relatively little um so as a photographer, I wanted the first columns to be all about images. Yeah. So the new images is simply a shortcut into showing you the latest pictures in the, the image library that I have that underpins my website. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So that's just a shortcut link into, oh, what's Alex been shooting recently? And actually that just opens up a, a big portion of that image library. And if you keep browsing, you can browse through you know thousands of images going yeah. back in time yeah. from that new image thing. Um, next up is a portfolio thing, which I haven't updated since I made this website. So it's probably five or six years old, but the images in there are still you know strong images. I think there's plenty of well-known images of mine that aren't in there. But I think particularly at my level of, of, of a career in underwater photography, people know a lot of my shots. Yeah. So I quite like the fact that it's not necessarily filled with the most obvious shots that maybe they would know me from these days. Yeah. So I don't mind that that's out of date. It's not, I don't think, particularly important. It probably does need an update sometime soon. Um, then bio is is a biography, which I can open up actually because I'm, I'm recording here. Um, so if I just click on bio, um, that's just a, you know, a, a standard photographer's biography showing, you know, what, what I, I get up to, talking about the things that, that I do. You obviously have your, your showing off pictures and then, you know, what you get up to. I obviously, I'm quite, uh, I would say I'm more of an editorial photographer and my pictures are very widely used. So I'm keen that the, the graphics on here say, look, Alex's pictures get used all over the place. Um, yeah. um, I also do, you know, a lot of teaching of underwater photography, both writing and, and verbally. So those I want to come through in, in showing the articles. And I think that, you know, it's also was important to me to show that I'm I'm productive. I'm not someone who just has a couple of nice pictures and I, I, I use them every now and again. I'm, you know, I'm taking a lot of pictures and I'm supplying a lot of clients. So those are kind of some of the messages I want to do, along with all the normal showing off about the things that, that you achieve. Um, now, sort of in the middle of this, this um, thing is, is kind of probably the more important things to me. 
Um, the workshops are a reason that a lot of people come to my website. So um, the workshops, and it's obviously dominated at the moment by, by um, announcements about COVID, are lists of the workshops that I have coming up. And this is where I announce new workshops, um, which I promote through my newsletter and both on the homepage, I didn't show you, but on this page as well, there's a sign up for that workshop announcements. Yep. And because the workshops are very popular, to be honest, the newsletter fills all my workshops. So although they get opened on my website, the announcements for them, I send an email at the same time that the page goes live and that email fills the trip before anyone who randomly is browsing my website ever really ever finds a trip. Um, but I, I keep the list up here so that maybe people who haven't been on a workshop with me get an idea of the sort of places I'm normally going sure. during the year. Sure. Um, and each of these, you know, opens up into a, you know, into a page about, you know, the particular, you know, s s trip that, that it's about. And there's a, a basking shark trip for this summer. And, you know, you can you can see about about the, the workshop. So that's kind of how that and that's probably the bit I, I, I modify the most. Then, you know, the other co columns on here, there's online teaching, which is what I'm doing quite a lot of at the moment. And this is a page about about that class and how it works and, and what it's like. Um, I've got information about the books that I've written down the years. I don't sell them really directly from my website. Um, and, um, but I, I, I think it's, it's just, it's good to remind people of, of what I've done down the years and a number of people who maybe know me through one book, this is a great way for them to connect with others. I also do one-to-one -one teaching, um, with people, which is normally when in normal times, I try and get people to come to my house and, and talk to me about that. And that's on here. Um, but in, in recent times, it's been much more zoom based, um, and, and, um, and talk teaching online. Um, I've been doing slightly less of that since I've been doing the online teaching because, um, it sucks a lot of time out of the week and with homeschooling and everything, teaching one-to-ones is kind of my whole day gone. So I've, I've been doing less of, less of those recently. I've only done a couple this year because of type of time. And then the final links are UPY, which is the, the competition that I, um, help to run. And that basically just links off to the UPY page, Magic Filters, that links off to the Magic Filters page. I think there, there are small holding pages on the website for each of them. And then the final um, thing is, is prints, um, mm. which I don't sell prints at the moment, but that page is really saying, um, I'm not selling prints of my work at the moment, so don't ask me. It kind of says, because I'm I don't sell them. So um, I think I think one of the one of the the features that is on your homepage, Alex, that I think we should probably touch on is your image search button. I think I think that's something we we speak about quite a lot on Webpixel Live, but I think it's worth emphasizing how important that is, really. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so right at the top of the page um, is um, is a, a search, image search button, um, and it says image search next to it, and that then allows you to access. The very large library of, of images that I've got on my website, and there's actually now more than 8,000 images on the website. They're all fully captioned and keyworded, mm. so you can type in, you know, you know, just, just type in shark, um, and you know, it'll bring up. Well, there's 658 pictures of sharks on here. It'll bring up all my stock of those particular subjects. If you're particularly interested in um, oceanic, you know, white tip shark. Um, you can type that in and it will bring up all the oceanic white tip sharks, et cetera. And you can, you know, modify that search that way. Um, and this then that is, gives. Thing. This is important functionality. I think if you're planning editorial sales and, um, you know, you've got an editor that's wanting an image of, of a particular subject, you know, this is really how they're going to find those images. So, so we use social media to drive them to, to your website um, and then once they discover that they can go on the website and find an image of whatever subject they want simply by searching then that's when they tend to stay and you become their their point of port of call really for an image and that's a really important function i think is is probably a, it's a showcase but also a way where they can search your your image database as it were yeah 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 and, and every image that i put on my website is already being processed yeah so that if a magazine wants an image and they send me an email i don't have to say oh hang on a minute Give me half an hour and I'll, I'll sort that yeah. raw file out for you. Yeah. Um, I can send it by return. It also means if I'm busy, if I'm in the field, yeah. I, I have all those images with me all the time. Yeah. And I can you know quickly respond to people, assuming I have some sort of internet connection yeah. um, and be able to send images back to people by return. 
actually, I have these images in a place that you can also access. Um, someone could be given a password to and log into. So if I get really desperate in the field and I haven't got internet that can send a picture, I can actually send to a client, use these login details and search for the file name and you'll find the full res file. But I, I, I'd rather actually just, you know, sort of email my wife and say, can you send this to this person or something like that? Yeah. So, um, but it's, you know, so I've got that capability, but I don't let usually let people have access to that thing. Cause obviously once you've let someone in, you then need to change the password so they don't, you know, come back and exploit it in the future. So um, but I find this yeah, really, yeah, really valuable. So this, I was going to tell you how this was, yeah. is all put together. And obviously if you, if you click on the picture, it comes up and, if, and for to, we talk about this quite a lot on wet pixel live you can click here and read all the camera settings i was using this is shot with the wacp which is why it says 2870 um and you you know so you can see the camera settings i was using and you can see all the information i've got typed in about it mm. um which is why you can search this you know i often say if you want to see wacp images if you type in 28.0 which you'll see down here in the lens info that will bring up all my WACP photos and and a few topside pictures taken with the same lens as you see there. These are all British pictures. So and there's 400 plus pictures taken with this with the WACP. So it gives you a really interesting insight into what that lens can be used for. So so I mentioned earlier my website's template based. Um, how is yours set up, Alex? What what what's it based on? So the um, the main website is a WordPress website that's been modified with a custom um, design. Um, to look, you know, the way I want it to, but it's basically very simple WordPress, very, very simple to edit. It's just click and drop and type and it all comes up. The image gallery is based in a piece of software called Zen photo, which is a free piece of software. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, us underwater officers don't have loads of money to start throwing it at complicated websites. And, you know, I don't want to have a, you know, five, 600, you know, pound a year bill to run my website when I might only be earning a few thousand from 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 memory sales or something it would be a massive chunk out of my earnings yep. so for me it was key to use a piece of software that was free and the Zen photo software was free um, the, the software builds the library by as long as I've captioned and keyworded the photo correctly out of Lightroom and out of, of, of Bridge and or Photoshop, um, the Zen Photo software will read that caption and it builds this searchable database from what I type in in the in the caption. So if I type in Adam Hanlon um, into my search engine, pictures with Adam Hanlon will come up because yeah. you were tagged at some point in that picture. And there is, is the mighty Adam Hanlon diving in the Bahamas. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, so it's it, you know it, it it goes through all the metadata that's been attached to the image at any point, yeah. and we'll pick those things up. So it means that there's a lot of potential search terms as long as I've typed those words in correctly when you know in Lightroom and then onwards into Photoshop when adding more detailed captions. Yeah, which is more which is a workflow thing, really, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, yeah, but and but actually that aspect of it means. All I do when I want to add pictures to this library is I simply upload them to the website yep. and it adds them to the searchable database. Yep. Yep. And obviously this is all searchable from Google as well. Yep. So, you know, if someone, you know, searches for Oceanic White Tip Shark, you know, they'll they'll find these pictures that way too. So, yep. you know, that's that makes the pictures very findable and people come, you know, come to the website, find them, and then because they're on my website, they realize, okay, here's a, you know, someone who's clearly doing this as a career we have to offer him money for the pictures. And I think that is a real value of a website is that if people can see that you operate professionally, they don't then write to you and go, oh, by the way, we haven't got any money. Can we have your pictures for free? They, they see, oh gosh, this person does this seriously. Therefore, this is the person we have to pay. Yeah. And I think that is a value of a website. I think a lot of people on social media, they go, oh, this person's got beautiful pictures. We'd love to use those. Oh, they're just kind of doing this for fun. Um, could we use your pictures, please, in our project? You know without money and i think if you've got a website and people come to the website it's a great way of establishing yourself as someone who who should be paid for their work as opposed to be asked to give it away for free so i hope that's given you a bit of an insight into so, what my website does that's probably a, a good place to kind of end this because that kind of summons up a good reason for having a, a website um, in addition to a, a strong social media presence so um obviously we've talked about alex's website a lot um go and have a look at it um mine uh, my personal website is hanlon photography.com 
um, and go and have a look at that too, possibly two different ways of approaching it. Um, and obviously there's there's lots of um, information. There was a lot of information shared about websites on, uh, on WebPixel as well. So have a look there as well. So thank you very much, Alex. Um, no problem. Um, and as always, um, we would like to thank our sponsor, which is uh, Critter Lembe Lembe Resort. Um, thank you very much. We can't do make these these um, episodes without their support. Um, and I thank you all for watching. Um, and please feel free to add comments about your experiences using websites or, or social media, or vice versa, in the comment section. And feel free to drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm -hmm.